Hey everyone, Mr. Mse here. This is Gav for Circuit de la Sarth with the Peugeot 908 HDI. Let's get this started. When you go through the final chicane, you want to go through it on third gear so the car can be a bit more stable as you start your lap. You can take this first turn flat out, but as soon as this first turn ends, before the first total sign on the right, that is where you want to start to break. This first chicane coming up is pretty tricky if you're going to try to cheese it like how I do. So brake hard for a short while, slowly ease off of the brakes. If you plan to bring your right wheels over the curves, you want to make sure that you are not accelerating nor braking at all and it applies to this turn as well because the moment you start to use a little bit of braking or accelerating as you go over those curves, you will risk getting an off-track penalty. Bring yourself to the right, and shortly after you pass the final cute little cone on the right, that is where you want to brake hard for a short moment, slowly ease off of the brakes, and carefully get on the throttle, bring yourself to the left. Now as the road on the right starts to open up, you want to start to ease off of the throttle and take advantage of the curves. And make sure you bring your right wheels back onto the main track before the curb ends, otherwise you risk getting an off-track penalty. Let's go ahead and fast forward through this. Look for the photographer that is on the left as he's your next braking point. Brake hard for a short while and slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in, slowly shift down. You can briefly go down to second gear for extra rotation, then back up to third gear as you're slowly starting to accelerate. If you can get this right and go through it super smoothly, you'll shave off quite a bit of time here. Now let's go ahead and go to the second chicane. You want to brake just before you reach the 100 meter board, so brake right around here before the 100 meter board. This is similar to the first chicane we just went through, but this chicane is a little sharper than the last one, so you do want to go through it a bit more slowly. Let's fast forward through this again. And your next braking point is just as a curb on the right starts. Brake as much as you can for a short while, and you can briefly go down to first gear to get the car to rotate, then back up to second gear, get the car pointing where you want to go, and then fully accelerate. Now bring yourself to the left, and just as the astroturf on the left is about to end, you want to start to ease off of the throttle, slowly start to go into full braking mode, and then slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in. If you brake too hard too suddenly, the car will risk losing control. Now bring yourself to the left, brake before you reach the 50 meter board that is on the left, brake hard for a short while, slowly ease off of the brakes. You can briefly go down to first gear for extra rotation, then back up to second gear before you accelerate. Now bring yourself to the left once again, and when the astroturf on the left starts, you want to use a little bit of braking. You can bring yourself towards the inside of the turn, and then fully accelerate. Lift off our throttle for this left turn, then use a little bit of braking for this right turn. Lots of throttle control needed over here. Slowly accelerate. Take this part flat out, and then this is where it gets a little tricky. Pretend you're about to go into the pit lane, but then start to brake just before the curb on the right starts. Brake hard for a short moment, and you need to be very quick on your reactions. Take advantage of the curves, doing lots of braking and throttle control. Brake before the curb on the right starts. Do a lot more braking and throttle control, just trying to keep the car stable within track limits, get the car towards third gear, pointing towards the start finish line, and then fully accelerate. And that is pretty much it for this lap guide, let's go ahead and take a look at the strategies. For this race, we are doing 6 laps at Circuit de la Sarth, and we're doing this with Group 1 cars. And what makes me pretty happy about this specific deli race is that feel is not an issue. And for those who don't know, Whenever we had a Delhi Race C here at uh, Circuit de la South with Group 1 cars, 
Usually fuel was an issue, which means that people would be doing the time trial in the Alpine VGT or the Peugeot 908. And then they'll do the race in the Toyota TSO 50 because that car is pretty good at fuel saving. But luckily, fuel saving is not an issue. We can pretty much just go all out. So that's going to really open things up for a lot of cars to be viable here. And for example, you're going to see me using the Alpine VGT here. This car is finally coming out to play after only being used as a time trial car. But I wouldn't suggest using it because this car is a little sketchy. But anyways, uh, there is also the Peugeot 908 HDI, which I'll be using in the next race that you'll see in a bit. That car is overall the best car as it pretty much does everything pretty well. Then there's other wacky cars that people will be using, like the uh, Dodge SRT Tomahawk, the Mazda 787B. So yes, Group C cars, you'll probably see them here. And it's pretty funny just watching them race with a VGT car. But yeah, lots of interesting things will be happening in this race. But anyways, going on over to the race details. So we are doing six laps here. Circuit de la Sarth, Group 1. You already heard that. Fuel is a times two, so fuel is not an issue at all. Tire wear is a times seven, but the tire wear is not too bad because we are using the racing medium and hard tires. Both tires are required to be used, so you do have to do at least one pit stop. So if you're starting on the racing medium tires, switch on over to the racing hard tires and vice versa. Ideally, you want to try to do five laps on the racing medium tires and then do one lap on the racing hard tires because the tire wear isn't too bad for most, if not all, cars. So, for example, with me, I'm going to be pitting in at the end of lap 5 because I'm starting on the racing medium tires. If you're starting on the racing hard tires, pit at the end of lap 1. And, well, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the pits up stuff. I do have one more thing I do want to show in a bit, which is the pit stop sequence and all that stuff, but we'll, we'll eventually get there. Group 1 cars are pretty interesting now that they're all racing together because you're going to see the strengths and weaknesses of many of these cars and they're going to be really visible. So for example, the 908 HDI it has a heck of a lot better acceleration than the Alpine VGT, which enabled the car that is now in first place to pretty much pass me without a problem and this car can be good it's just that it's not as good as the Peugeot 908 so for example right here you just see me struggle to accelerate while the turbo in the 908 that is ahead of me is just letting the car ahead of me just fly on by also for the Alpine VGT users be careful of this turn because this turn is really sketchy. This car just hates this turn for some reason. And that's this is particularly why I'm not suggesting to use this car because this turn and this car, they're like mortal enemies. So I don't want to end up dealing with that stuff. But anyways, switching on over to the end of lap 5, we're going to pit to change to the racing hard tires to meet our final tire requirement. Also, make sure you slow down for the pit stop entry because you do have to brake for this little chicane here. So you don't want to end up going full speed into the barriers and make yourself look silly. But anyways, your pit loss is going to be 28 seconds. So you only want to pit one time. And yeah, it's going to take a while for your car to arrive to the pit box. It's going to take about 20 million years because your car, I, I, don't, I don't know, they got lost or something. But anyways, so I was on the racing medium tires, I'm switching on over to the racing hard tires. And because we're only using the racing hard tires for one lap, this does bring an interesting situation where some cars or some people might be starting in the front and they might be starting on the racing hard tires to go for the massive undercut. And does this work? Well, we're going to find out right now, actually. So I'm starting on the racing hard tires in the next race, and we're in the Peugeot 908 HDI. Once again, in my opinion, this is overall the best car. And you want to be careful on the racing hard tires in the start of the race because your tires are cold, so you don't have much grip. And you're going to see me forget to brake early because I don't have the grip needed to get the braking and the turning right. 
So I'm going off track. The car in front of me goes off track because they're on the racing hard tires as well. The car that is right behind me, so the red Peugeot, they're on the racing medium tires. So I need to make sure that I am able to get the undercut on them. So when they pit, I can hopefully pass them. And it's going to come down to quite a few things to determine whether you're going to be able to get the undercut or not. So the first question, are you able to keep up with those in the front? And in this case, I am right now, except I'm, get <laughs> I'm getting passed by a Group C car. But anyways, uh, you don't get to say that every day. So if you're able to keep up with those in the front who are on the softer tire compound and you're on the harder tire compound, then that's going to help you out a bit. The other thing is, who is getting the penalties? If you're getting the penalties, then that's going to make your undercut attempt uh, less likely to be successful. If those who you're trying to undercut are the ones getting the penalties, for example, the two cars ahead of me, then that's going to make your chances of getting the undercut done a bit more successful. And also, are they battling a lot? That can also determine whether you're able to get the undercut done. So there's going to be a couple factors that will determine whether you're able to get the undercut done or not. And you also have to be careful because you're also dealing with people who are still on the racing medium tires. And people are going to be of all sorts of paces here, especially at a big track like Circuit de la Sarthe. So chances are you might be getting held back by someone. So for example, in this stint, or well, I'm still on the racing medium stint in the same race, but I'm getting held back by this Toyota TSO 50 and it's going to be difficult to overtake them because their acceleration is really good, but their overall pace is a little slower than mine. So I'm going to be forced to hang back behind them until I find a proper opportunity to pass them as cleanly as possible. And because my car has a lot higher top end speed than them, I'm going to be able to pass them as we go down the most end straight. So they don't have the top end speed, but I do, so I'm going to go ahead and pass by them. And we're going to skip on over to near the end of the race, so we're at the end of lap 5. And the car in first place, they're finally pitting in for their tire change. So it is now time to see if we can get the undercut done. And in my case, I only got held up once by the car in the last clip, and after that, I was pretty much under the clean air the entire time. And long story short, I'm going to be able to get the undercut done because the car that is still in the pit stops, they actually got a couple of track limit penalties, which ended up really hurting them. And I do want to say this, try not to get any penalties, especially the track limit penalties, because those penalties, when you have to serve them, they're going to hurt really bad. So yeah, so we got the undercut done and we're going to cruise on over to the finish line or not because I ended up almost binning it. But anyways, let's take a look at the penalty serving zones. There are a couple here at Circuit de la Sarthe. The first one isn't until you're in the second part of the Molson Strait. So I have to serve a half second penalty and yeah, you want to try to make sure you don't get a penalty because you have a super long straight and serving a penalty there is going to cost you quite a bit of time. And the next penalty serving zone isn't until you pass our nudge. So after this right turn, there's your next penalty serving zone. You waste a lot of time here, except in this case, it doesn't really do much to the Toyota TSO 50 because they have a hybrid. So they were able to pretty much regain their speed right away. Also, can we get the overtake done? No, never mind. And your final penalty serving zone is not too far from the start finish line. It's right here before the pit entry area. And this is a spot where you lose the least amount of time if you have to serve a penalty. And I don't think I really need to mention where to do the overtakes, where the best overtake spots are. Pretty much a high speed section like this, where you're not breaking or turning too much. Those are going to be your best places to get the overtake done. And it's also going to depend on the car that you're using versus the car that you're trying to overtake. Because I can overtake in terms of top speed, but in terms of acceleration, you just see that Toyota just passed me like nobody's business, but then I have the top end speed, so I'm going to go ahead and pass them again. So you're going to see some really weird battles happen, and I, I mean, and to an extent, that's actually pretty cool to see. 
But anyways, that is pretty much it for this guide. I do have a couple of things I want to mention before I go. I'll try to make it fast. Uh, the first one is that I just want to say thank you for the crazy awesome support lately. The update video, the one with the update patches and the FIA guides recently. Those have been getting a lot of love and support and I just want to take the time to say thank you for showing some love to those videos. And thank you for the 11,000 subscribers. That's really awesome to see. Another big thank you for that. And I also finally opened the YouTube memberships thing. I don't know how to announce this without making it awkward. But that's finally live now after being in limbo for so many months. So you can click the blue join button for the details and all that good stuff. And my team does have a Discord which you can check out. So if you have a Discord account, you can join the server, the team server, by clicking in the Discord link that is in the description down below. But anyways, that is all for me. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now as we cross the finish line. So this is Mr. MCA. Wish you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.